So I had a perspective drawing question about drawing wheels on cars. And before we can talk about wheels, we have to talk about cylinders. Before we can talk cylinders, we have to talk about circles. And before we can talk about circles, we have to talk about ellipses. Now, an ellipse is a two-dimensional shape that represents the three-dimensional circle. Ellipse has a long axis and a short axis. And when the long axis and the short, short axis are the same, you get a circle. And the bigger the discrepancy, the narrower the ellipse. Now, one of the cool things about the ellipse is that it is symmetrical in two directions. It's symmetrical top to bottom and side to side, which means that if we're looking at an object, the ellipse that describes this, this circle, where this is the near edge, is the same ellipse that describes this circle, where this is the near edge. Now, one of the best ways to draw an ellipse is to inscribe it into a rectangle. Got our rectangle, and we need the center of the rectangle. We need to bisect it in both directions. So here is our short axis, and here is our long axis. Long axis, short axis. And just like a circle will sit perfectly inside a square, an ellipse will sit perfectly inside a rectangle. And where it touches here, and here, and here, and here, that edge of the circle is going the same direction that the edge of the edge of the rectangle is. And our ellipse is a nice consistent change of arcs. And you see, I'm not getting it exactly right on any of these passes, and that's fine. I'm working up towards getting better and better each time. Since it's symmetrical, this, 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 and this should be exactly the same. Um, there are more uh, regimented mathematical ways to draw this, but this is a good, useful level of control here. Pardon me for a second. Okay, so while you're drawing your ellipses, you want a nice, even curvature. If you have sharp points, at your end, and you're drawing a football, then that's not it. If you're too big along the edges, and you end up drawing a rectangle with rounded corners, that's not it either. But as long as you're in between those two things, right, and I'm not getting it right the first time, it's fine not to get it right the first time. Work your way up and sort of average these lines you're drawing, and in between you'll find a pretty nice, smooth curve ellipse. Um, and like we said,
there are more mathematical ways to draw this, to, to map it out, certainly. Uh, but if you've got to draw 20 ellipses in a drawing, they're just not efficient. Um, and just getting reasonably good at freehanding them is really the way to go. The other thing we said is that an ellipse represents a circle, and that the ellipse that represents this circle, where this is the near edge, is the same ellipse that represents this circle, where this is the near edge. So we can take our ellipse, and it can be the top of a cylinder heading this way, or it can be the top of a cylinder heading that way. It works just the same. The only thing we need to keep in mind is that the center of the cylinder is not the cylinder, it's the center of the circle. Um, the ellipse is symmetrical all these directions, but the circle, the half of it that's closer to us, is bigger than the half of it that's further away from us because it's closer. So the center of the ellipse is the long axis, but the center of the circle is actually back here a little bit. The center of the circle, if you're putting the, uh, the hole in a record or finding the center of a, of a CD, that's a little further. This distance is smaller than that distance. And that means the center of the circle is actually a little past the wider point the widest point of your ellipse is closer than the widest point of the circle. Now, the next thing we want to keep in mind is a cylinder is made of two ellipses and the two lines that join them. Now, if you ask somebody up at the top of their head to just quickly cartoon a trash can, you get an open circle towards the top because it's round. That's where we throw stuff into. And the side's going down. And then the bottom is flat because it sits on the ground. Um, and this is the opposite of how ellipses actually work. And we all do this to a certain extent if we're not careful. So if we look at this ellipse, it's nice and wide. It's a circle, almost a circle. It's getting narrower and narrower and narrower. The ellipse is closing. And here the ellipse is all the way closed. It's a straight line. But this ellipse back here at the further away part of the cylinder is open a little bit. We open this a little bit, that opens more. We open this a little bit more, that opens even more. The further part of the cylinder is the one that's the most open. It's, um, it's smaller than here because it's further away, but it's more open. And this is more closed, which is pretty counterintuitive, but it's important for being able to draw our cylinders. That up here, right, here's the center of our cylinder, which is the short axis of our ellipses. Up here that's close to us is pretty close, pretty closed, and it opens a little as we go down, and we get down here to the end of it, and it's considerably more open than it is here. The ellipses open more and more and more the further they get from the viewer. So, now we're finally talking about cars. The most useful way to think about wheels for me is not four separate wheels, but as two long cylinders. The front two wheels make one cylinder, the back two wheels make another cylinder. When it's going straight ahead, we'll talk about what happens when it turns a little later. All right, it's not actually the same cylinder. It's little cylinders joined, but it's so useful to think about them as one long 
Fred Flintstone rolling pin cylinder. One big log. So, if we're sketching out our car and it's pretty close to us, so the vanishing points are pretty close to us, so uh, things are flaring out pretty big, and we've got the front of the car down here, the back of the car back here, and the sort of cockpit of the car coming up here, the wheels, think of them as a cylinder running this direction, right? They're pointing towards that vanishing point up here. And this one back here, pointing towards that vanishing point up here. So the angle is getting bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes. So the center point of this cylinder is here. And we're going to make that cylinder, that center line, be the small axis of the ellipse. Now, this is only literally true right in the center of the picture. As it goes other places, it tilts a little bit and that sort of thing. But this is so close to being right everywhere. This will serve you well. Draw this, it'll look fine. Um, if later on in your career you want to learn exactly how to tilt those ellipses, you can do it. So, my short axis is the center of the cylinder. My long axis is perpendicular to that short axis. And how wide is it? Well, there's really complicated perspective ways to figure it out. But honestly, if you've got something to look at, you can just sort of eyeball it. And after you've eyeballed it a few times, you get pretty good at getting a decent idea for how open or closed this cylinder should be. If we're seeing a lot of the top of the car, that cylinder is really closed. If we're seeing a lot of the side of the car, that cylinder is really open. And here in this view, we're somewhere in between, right? We're seeing a lot of the side, but a lot of the top also. So it's sort of halfway in between. So there's the outline of the tire. And the cylinder's going this way. And the thickness of the tire, we don't usually see, so it's not that important, but it would be right there. And what we want to remember as we do hubcaps and that sort of thing is the center of the ellipse isn't the cylinder of, center of the circle. So the ellipse that makes the hubcap or the, the mag wheel or whatever is a little further away so that this space here is bigger than that space there. And there's our tire. And we could do the same thing to draw this one, but we can't see it, so why would we put a lot of effort into that? Now we get back to this tire, this wheel, and its cylinder should be just the tiniest bit smaller than that one because this one's closer. And it is. It's a little bit smaller. And the edges of the cylinder are heading towards the same vanishing point as these ones. The center of the cylinder is heading towards the same vanishing point as these ones. But where the long axis is here, because this cylinder is more tilted, the long axis is now a little more tilted too. The short axis is here, and the long axis is perpendicular to that. There. And the how open is it is about the same maybe oh shucks i broke my lid sorry i've got another pencil here maybe just a little more closed there's our ellipse the ellipse that makes the mag wheel or the hubcap is a little further away so this is bigger this is smaller And there's our rear tire. And we go in and, of course, the body of the car covers most of that.
All right, so there's, there are our two visible wheels. Now, as this big cylinder, uh, as these front wheels turn, it's no longer one long cylinder, it's two. The, if it turns this way, here's the near wheel, and back over here, here's the far wheel. So let's have this turning this direction, right? The car is going that way. So our uh, cylinder that makes this car, its center is still right here because that's where the mechanism that turns the wheel is. And it's still pointing towards the horizon line. But the center of the cylinder is here. The edges are here, and the um, short axis aligns with the center. The long axis is perpendicular to that. Since this has turned a little square to us, the wheel will look a little bigger than it used to. And there's our tire. A little further away, there's our mag wheel. It's in there, but again, the fender of the car is going to cover most of that. And we'll see a little gap here, and up here is going to be hidden underneath the fender there. And this wheel back here, we can't see it in this kind of car, but if it was a Formula One or something where we could see both wheels, it would be heading towards the same vanishing point. And here's the center line, which makes the short perpendicular for the long axis. And it's further away than this, so it's a little more open. So that wheel that we can't see would be turned kind of like that, allowing the car to turn the corner as it goes. So that's our introduction to ellipses. A cylinder is a stack of circles. And a drawing of a cylinder is a stack of ellipses. The ellipse that's closest to you is the ellipse that's the most open. I mean, is the that is the most closed. And the ellipse that's furthest from you is the ellipse that's most open. Keep that in mind. Um, Get a little bit of practice drawing this shape, and uh, you'll really be set.